Welcome to the Tool Hut channel. Today we have a 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee. The shop is installing a used PCM. We're going to program it, not using a PIN number. Watch and learn. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below. Okay, first things first. Any of the equipment that you see used in my videos is available on the website. If it's not there, send me an inquiry off the website toolhutusa.com. That's T O O L H U T USA.com. My name is Sam. All right, so let's get going here. We have a 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee. The shop is installing a used PCM. Now, somebody's going to say I do a lot of videos like this. And one of the reasons that I continue to do these videos like this is that shops always call me asking me what step what step did I skip? I don't skip any stops. I don't need a PID number to do this if you follow my procedure. There's no reason to call the dealer. There's no reason to buy a PIN number. It works. I'm not skipping any steps, I promise you. If you follow the procedure as I've laid out, it's going to work. I do a lot of them like this. Watch and learn. Okay, so the equipment that I am using in this video is the Chrysler Y-Tech 2.0 software, the, Chrys the new Chrysler MDP. You can also use the Micropod 2, and I've got a battery maintainer on this vehicle. So pretty straightforward, uh, all Chrysler stuff. By the way, you could also use the J2534 application YTEC 2.0 with the J2534 device. Now, once that's all set up and uh, connected, it's the exact same procedure. It's a little different getting, getting going, but once you're connected to the vehicle, it's the same exact procedure. I'm not going to cover starting that. Uh, we've done that in a previous video. All right, so the original PCM to the vehicle is still in this car. It's, it still communicates, and it's still in this car. If it doesn't communicate, you're not going to be able to do it this way. This one happens to still communicate, and it is installed in the vehicle. Uh, they're fixing a, uh, a different problem. So it's not a communication problem. So, you ready to get this going? Okay. Whitec 2 software is open. We go to the PCM first, and we're just going to pretend we're going to program the PCM. We're just going to go to the tab for programming it. And once we've done this, before you hit the flash ECU button, that's when you want to re install the replacement PCM. So it doesn't stay in there, the original one doesn't stay in there very long, but it does have to stay in there uh, to get some data. So this is the point that you put the replacement PCM in. Do not disconnect the battery, just turn the key off. Now you got to finish filling out your information with Chrysler here. All right, we fill out our information with Chrysler. I don't really think they need a whole lot of information here. So you got to log in, pay for your subscription, get your authentication code, you know, blah, 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 high security. Just going to do it, do the whole thing here. We got to get our verification code. I'm sure the dealers don't deal with this as much as we do. Maybe I'm wrong. If you can dealer tech and you're going through the same thing, just let us know. 
I think it's crazy. All the steps we gotta jump through here. I've already used Google Authenticator. I've already paid my money. And now I gotta get a email verification code. And pay for a programming file. And anyway, it downloads the flash file and it programs the PCM just like it's a new PCM or an update. This one happened to have an update uh, on it from what the original one was. So it didn't ask you a bunch of questions about uh, programming the PCM with the same calibration. But even if it does ask you that, just tell it, yes, you're sure you want to go ahead and program with the same calibration because eh, why not? It's just money. And Chrysler's good about taking money. So we're just going to let it do its programming here. I have not sped up this process, so what you're seeing is how long it really takes to uh, program these. I've had a couple requests to not speed through it. Uh, I don't understand it, but I figure I'll, let, I'll do it that way on this one. I'll probably speed them up in the future. It doesn't take too long to program this one anyway, so I'm just going to kind of watch the Watch the green bar, or watch the grass grow, or watch the paint dry, whatever you want to do. I want to make sure you understand I'm not skipping any steps. also like to somebody to comment down below if they've used this procedure and it's been successful. Like I say, I get lots of requests. Uh, I usually call my phone or send me email saying that I've skipped a step, that they needed the PIN number from the dealer. And I assure you, you don't need the PIN number from the dealer. You gotta follow all the steps though. Programming is just one of the steps. Now, once it's programmed, I'll show you what you gotta do. Which will be the end of the rest of the story, I guess. One of the things you always do after you program a PCM uh, at any vehicle, in my opinion, is you always make sure the trans and any other powertrain control modules or any powertrain type modules, whether it's a transfer case module or a uh, powertrain, you know, anything to do with the powertrain, the uh, transmission, transfer case, anything like that. You want to make sure that everything's got a current calibration in it. It did ask you to turn the key off here. And Chrysler's pretty good about setting a timer. Oh, it tells you to turn the key back on. It's going to rescan the vehicle here. At this point, the vehicle will not start, so do not try it. I don't know why you would, but don't try to start it at this point. So DTCs I'm not concerned about. We're going to go to, over on the left-hand side, go to Guided Diagnostics. This is a very important step. We're going to restore vehicle configuration. And this worked up until they went to the GPEC style computer, the little flat, skinny computer. It says that it was successful and it wants the key off. It says to remove the tool from the DLC. I never do. But it is important that the key is off for a, a period of time. Uh, I would say 30 seconds to a minim, minute, minimum. Otherwise, you have a flashing uh, theft light. 
So we're just turning the key back on. We hit OK. It's going to rescan the vehicle again. I've got a bunch of codes now, so we're just going to hit the Clear All DTCs button. DTCs are cleared. See the WCM has an original VIN missing or mismatch code. I do have a flashing security light right here. The solution for that is to turn the key off for longer. So just shut the key off. The car does start and run, by the way. Just shut the key off and let the vehicle go to sleep. That is the solution. I probably didn't leave the key off for long enough first time. You want to wait for everything to turn red. A lot of times the WSCM won't go to sleep right away, but this one happens to have fallen right asleep. And I'm going to do an update on the transmission control module and the drivetrain control module here as well. I'm just trying to get the security light to stop flashing here at this point and you'll notice that my original VIN missing or stored has gone away so no concerns so I'm not going to go through the update of the TCM and the drivetrain control module uh, it's kind of irrelevant at this point so just keep in mind I am doing it and questions comments down below have a great day while you got a second why don't you go ahead and click that like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out i welcome any questions or comments you may have down below